The Farrelly Brothers, directors of There's Something About Mary, re-team with Jim Carrey. I hate to bother you with this, but uh, your car is going to have to be moved. Pack it up behind the grocery store, will you, Charlie? And Jim Carrey. There you go, Dick. I packed it for you. In Me, Myself, and Irene, the new comedy from 20th Century Fox. It's absolute insanity and depravity. Dun, dun. Scene after scene, also together in a kind of a psychotic quilt. Doctors have diagnosed you as having a split personality. I'm scared so. I, I don't remember any of this. Charlie Bailey Gates is a nice guy. Rhode Island state trooper, you know, puts everybody before himself. Just a nice guy. Too nice. Sweetie, that's kind of dangerous. You want to move it up onto the sidewalk, away from the traffic? So Hank shows up. <laughs> to take care of the other stuff that's inside that he's not expressing. And boy, does he express it. <laughs> Still want to skip rope on the street? I'm gonna call my daddy on you, Charlie. Wrong answer. And the name's Hank. Hank and Charlie meet Irene. Her name's Waters, Irene P. I pulled her over for a broken taillight. We'll have one of our troopers escort you. <laughs> Charlie and Hank. Uh, that are fighting over the same woman. And, uh, you know, Hank is created because Charlie's kind of a pushover, and so suddenly this other character comes out. His name's Hank. Hank Evans. Four little girls. So it's true. Charlie is a schizo. And it becomes a, you know, like a classic love triangle where he's both guys, and he's fighting with himself for her affection. Just because I rock doesn't mean I'm made of stone. Hank. But is there any way that maybe we could get Charlie back out here for a little huddle? In addition to suffering from advanced delusionary schizophrenia with involuntary narcissistic rage, Charlie's childhood sweetheart left him with the task of raising triplets. He marries a woman he's crazy about, she's crazy about him, and lo and behold, she falls in love with the limo driver who picks him up at their wedding. The other man happens to be a uh, a vertically challenged uh, African American. Black midget. They have three babies. It's a boy! Oh, boy, oh, boy. And then she deserts him. But Jim's character, he just loves these boys, so he raises them himself. How's my little guy doing? Struggling. This quantum physics is confusing. If I don't buckle down, I'm gonna give myself another B plus. Ooh, that'd be whack. <laughs> hey, what? I don't look like Jim Carrey. You don't think he could be my dad? I think he could be my dad. I think we look alike. Hey. <laughs> oh, I got him out of here. I don't want to have to bust a cat. <laughs> Kisses. Come on, Daddy. He raises us close to our heritage. You know. Uh, he doesn't want us to stray away from the community. I'm not leaving till the morning, but you know the rules when I go. No bitches after 11. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pop. <laughs> he's a great dad. Doesn't matter what anybody says about us. You know, he's always sticking up for us, and, that, you know, we're his kids no matter what. Hey, your father's a police officer, and he asked me to come alone. How was I to know he's a nutcase? He may have advanced illusionary schizophrenia with involuntary uh. narcissistic rage, but he is a very gentle person. Cut. It's too funny to stop this. Let's keep it going. Man. Peter and Bobby Farrelly also directed Jim in Dumb and Dumber. To Jim, it was like coming back to old friends. Funny, funny guys. They're just real down to earth and real kind of like connected to everybody they've ever known in their lives, and they're enviable in that way. <laughs> They keep a really close-knit group of people around them, so it feels like, you know, you're working with this extended family, and then so soon you become part of it. That's gone. Yeah, let's cut it. That's a good, it's a good cut. They are the greatest directors, I'm telling you, man. They're just very good people. I mean, I wish I had a brother that, that had that kind of bond. Two crazy brothers who just, just got an idea. Oh, I know what we could do, you know, we could, let's do this right here. You know, it's always like on a spur of the moment. You guys are looking down at your daddy. The hell with my, the hell with that, looking at daddy if I gotta go between this man's legs. The way their mind works, how, where they find their jokes and their humor, you know what I'm saying? I don't think anybody can tap into the vein that they've tapped into. But there's something about Mary, you know, they sort of pushed on. The 
envelope. This one, you know, we open it up, shred it in front of you. And we always have a blast. There's no pretension. There's no anything like that on these movies. Oh, no! It's just balls out comedy. Can I say that? What the hell are you still doing here? You can't get rid of me, Hank. Leave your taste at the door. Hank! Hank! Ugh! You're only hurting yourself! It's hard to make people laugh nowadays without breaking boundaries. Lego girl, on the greener pastures, come on, Lego! But we want people to have a lot of laughs and then come away feeling good. You can't beat the open road! Oh, my dad can't see this movie. The end is coming. Look, I'm not here to twist your niblets. What? Sound good, candy pants. Myself and Irene. I mean, you should be furious. I just drop kicked you right in the face. Hey, it happens. 